Welcome to Free From Alcohol, Full of Flavor, an insights-driven webcast from Flavorsome, designed to spark your innovation journey in the no alk beverage category. I'm Lisa Jackson, Director of Marketing, and today we'll be talking about the market dynamics and consumer expectations of this rapidly growing category. Now, although the webcast is pre-recorded, we do have a team available to answer your questions. I'll have information about how to contact us at the end of the session. And you'll also have access to an ebook that contains additional insights and formulation tips. For now though, let's get started in our investigation of opportunities that are bubbling up in the no alk beverage category. Now, no and low alcohol is growing very quickly in North America. North America is actually one of the fastest growing markets for no alk beverages, as shown on this chart from IWSR, that's the International Wine and Spirit Research Organization. In 2021, volume increased more than 25% in North America. No alk share of the adult beverage market is less than 7% right now, but anticipated growth is above 30% through 2025. That far outpaces the alcoholic beverage growth rate of 10.6%. Now, definitions for a non-alcoholic beverage vary by country, but generally anything below 0.5% alcohol by volume or ABV is considered a non-alcoholic beverage. The category de definitions are continuing to evolve though because producers are exploring things like alcohol free with less than 0.05% ABV. Low alcohol beverages contain less than 1.2% ABV. That's the level you'll find in low alk beers or fermented functional beverages like kefir. The market is small but it's really bubbling up. IWSR places the market value of no and low alcoholic beverages in North America at about $2 billion in 2021. Nielsen is more bullish. They estimate that off-premise sales are about $3.4 billion through mid-2022. The lion's share of the category is still centered in low alcoholic solutions. Quantifying the category is challenging because emerging brands, especially in the no alk segment, are building through online or food service sales. For the purposes of our discussion today and the research that we're about to share, we're focusing on the non-alcoholic segment because although these beverages hold a smaller share of total alcoholic drinks, their double-digit gains make them the segment to watch. We wanted to gain insight into awareness, usage, and expectations about non-alcoholic RTDs and spirits. So Flavorsome connected with more than 800 North Americans in March of 2022. We asked about their awareness and usage of several types of beverages to help establish a baseline for the no alk segments. Awareness is generally high, but there is an opportunity to build trial. This chart shows awareness and purchase behavior across the set of beverages that we examined. The dark purple section at the very top of the columns shows the percent of people buying various drinks. The pink section right below that captures those who have seen these beverages but haven't purchased them yet. These two groups represent those most actively involved with the category. The red section shows people who are aware of the beverage, but haven't seen it. So they've heard about it, or they might have <clears throat> seen something online, but they haven't actively seen it in the store. And the light purple at the bottom records those who aren't aware of these beverages at all. So looking across the set shows that awareness is fairly high. We have almost eight, more than eight in 10 people who are aware of no alk cocktails and seven in 10 who are aware of no elk spirits. More than one third have seen the products in the marketplace, but that's much lower than the more established no elk beer. There's upside in the purchase rate for no elk spirits. Non-alcoholic cocktails are getting more traction than no elk beer, but they still lag their alcoholic counterparts. When it comes to consumption, interestingly, the no elk consumption patterns really do reflect a pretty high level of acceptance and adoption. Among people who purchase beverages for themselves or others, consumption patterns show that they're treating no alk options similarly to alcoholic beverages. For most, that means they're drinking these cocktails and spirits with no alcohol at least once a month. Notice that non-alcoholic cocktails align closely with the alcoholic counterparts, with one third drinking each weekly. No alk spirits have heavier adoption, with more than 40% consuming at least weekly. The absence of alcohol and the potential excitement for the drinking experience leads to really versatile appeal for many people. Roughly half of North Americans like the idea of no alk beverages for relaxing, and they see them as a good fit, especially for the end of the day. 
Non-alcoholic drinks fit equally well with daytime or lunch and social settings where people may not want to drink alcohol, but still want to have a more exciting experience than a soda or a juice. The net is that no alk beverages are becoming part of an acceptable set that includes alcoholic choices. People buying non-alcoholic beverages and those who express interest say they choose or would choose a non-alcoholic option as something that's different, exciting, and healthier, especially for the end of the day. Now, the demographics of people buying no alk cocktails shows that they are currently in higher socioeconomic levels. This chart shows the purchase dynamics for people buying non-alcoholic cocktails. And you can see that the purchasers really do fall in that millennial and Gen X generation. Non-alcoholic spirits have similar characteristics. Income tends to be well above average. They're employed, married, college graduates. Average age is between 39 and 42. And genders are almost equally represented with a slight skew toward men. Back to the generations for a minute. Millennials and Gen X represent about 43% of the North American population but they're accounting for about 80% of the purchasing behavior right now in the no alk space. Purchasers of no alk RTD cocktails and spirits, well, they're more likely to be beverage dabblers or experimenters. So when we look across all of their beverages that they consume, they're drinking three or more different types of beverages on a monthly basis. In contrast, those who are aware of these non-alcoholic options but not yet buying them, are only drinking one to two different types of beverages. So there is an adventurous quality to these that I anticipate will change over time as more people become familiar with the solution. Now, the desire for something different or more exciting than a soda or juice, those are the primary drivers of interest in non-alcoholic beverages. But the sober curious movement and interest in healthier beverage options is certainly contributing to the growth rate. About seven in 10 North Americans say they've engaged in a period of sobriety in the last year. About 40% say they've either participated in or want to engage in dry January. And among participants, about 80% are re-upping their pledge. Outside of dry January or now sober October, about one third of people say that they would drink less if they had more non-alc choices. And more than 20% are actively trying to cut back on drinking. This number bumps up to about 25% when you look at just millennials and Gen Zs, that population that's really actively engaged in the category. Now, understanding who, why, and when of no out beverages is essential to establishing your brand strategy. But when it's time to start formulating, having insights into what people want can be a game changer. We ask people to tell us about the characteristics that are important to deliver in a no-alk cocktail or spirit and rate their satisfaction with products currently in the marketplace. So this really helps us understand the desirable characteristics from non-alcoholic RTD cocktails and spirits. The chart that you see here plots what's important along the x-axis against satisfaction on the y-axis. It's worth noting that satisfaction levels were less than 50% on any attribute. That means brands have ample opportunity to deliver a better experience. So what's most important, circled in green, you'll see attributes like give me something that's familiar in terms of flavor, but I also want something that feels like an away from home drinking experience at a good value. Next up, give me a complex flavor without artificiality, lower the sugar and lower the calories. Less important, I'm not, you know, a little bit of alcohol is okay. So a zero alcohol is not as relevant as some of these other things. Um, I don't need artisanal or botanical ingredients either, or carbonation, meaning you can offer a still cocktail in this space. And least important, those here shown in the lower right, the attributes that actually define the alcohol beverage experience. The wish list for no alk spirits is similar to cocktails, with people asking for good value, familiar flavors, and an away from home taste. Lower sugar rounds out the top four needs. The absence of artificiality, flavor complexity, and low calorie are the next level, followed by, you know, I don't really need artisanal or functional ingredients, and I don't need zero alcohol. Carbonation and botanicals are least important in this matrix for no alk spirits. And again, the alcoholic qualities, like bitter notes, dryness, or burn, are not important dimensions to most people. They are about 20 to 25%. There's a group that's interested in that, but for the majority, those aren't attributes that are driving them to the space. 
So how do you achieve success? How do you deliver the complex mouthfeel and taste people crave in a no-alk cocktail or spirit? Well, formulators can employ different techniques to create desirable mouthfeel, such as including more intense sweeteners, glycerin, gums, or starches. But finding the right balance often requires partnership with knowledgeable applications experts. Taste in an alcoholic cocktail or spirit includes attributes of aroma, beginning, middle, and linger, and flavors can give brewers and distillers a robust toolkit. I have an example here that takes a very simple syrup. So this is made with cane sugar, a little bit of preservative and sodium benzoate, citric acid, but importantly, it has a very complex flavor solution system. It has a basil flavor, a cucumber lime flavor, and a lime flavor, all in natural ingredients, but blended in such a way that, I'm mixing, missing the cup. <clears throat> but blended in such a way that when you mix it into a one to five ratio, I'll do this. I can already take, I can already smell the aroma of both the basil and the cucumber. Pour it over a little bit of ice. Mix up a bit. And the flavor layers intertwine and expand during consumption, making people wonder what makes this non-alcoholic drink so delicious and creating a craving for one more sip. When formulating an alcohol-free beverage, it can be helpful to play into some classic flavor combinations available in full alcohol versions, but then use a little bit of a twist. The North Americans that we talked to expressed interest in a variety of non-alcoholic versions of ready-to-drink cocktails. And on an unaided basis, you can see that desirable flavor profiles include a lot of familiar tastes. But flavors are very versatile, and they provide an innovation pathway for adding new combinations to familiar formats, like a caramel apple old-fashioned, or a cucumber gin martini, or in the case of the sample there, a cucumber basil gin ricky. Had a little bit of gin flavor infused into it as well. North Americans are interested in a variety of spirit bases in no alk formats. You can see here that the most preferred spirit base is vodka, followed by rum and whiskey, then tequila, gin, and brandy. So there is very broad interest. Flavors can support the creation of non-alcoholic spirits. They can bring in the slight saltiness of vodka or the toasted sweet notes of rum. Botanicals rounded out with olive juice or brine can also replicate gin. Now, expectations for flavored spirits mirror experience with alcoholic counterparts. Almost 50% would like a sweet profile. About 30% say they'd like something more savory. Clear non-alcoholic spirits that replicate vodka or gin or tequila are viewed to be the most versatile for flavor pairing, and that's what we see in the marketplace on the alcoholic beverage side. Most people agree that berry, citrus, tropical fruit, and melon profiles are a good fit for those lighter spirits. Non-alcoholic gin can also align with botanicals, just like it does on the alcoholic side. And non-alcoholic whiskey and rum pair best with spicier or indulgent flavor profiles. Rum goes a little bit further in that pairing with tropical or citrus also makes sense. So with the formulating roadmaps in place, we wanted to examine one more dimension of beverage innovation in the non-alcoholic category, and that's functionality. Can they deliver functional benefits? This chart plots interest in functional benefits against how achievable it could be to deliver purpose in a no alcohol format. People are pretty skeptical. They're not sure that a non-alcoholic adult beverage could deliver on some of their most desirable functional benefits like support for their immune system or their brain health. Conversely, they believe that all of their nutritional desires, like sugar-free, carb-free, or organic, can be achieved by these products. Notable exceptions? Relaxation. That's a benefit inherent in alcoholic options that they still want in the non-alc format. And energy, which seems like a dichotomy, it's a benefit that we see, though, in high demand across the food and beverage landscape, and uh, no alk is no different. They want something that could infuse energy as well. So breaking the question of functionality by type of no alk beverage reveals that there's a stronger fit between no alk cocktails and mood enhancement or energy on either sides of those spectrums. And, and in general, people, more people believe that these benefits could be delivered through a cocktail than a spirit. Now, most of the attributes that fit with RTDs also do align with the spirits, although at a lower level. Interestingly, six in 10 of people that we surveyed expressed interest in getting gluten-free, non-alcoholic spirits. So where do we go from here? What's your next move? 
Well, no alk beverages are more than buzz. We see that interest and expectations about taste and quality are continuing to rise, and so far, there aren't a lot of brands that are hitting the mark. Connecting with people who want no alk drinks means positioning your brand as something that is sophisticated and flavorful and fun. Fun is communicated through packaging and flavor profiles that are going to help non-drinkers fit in. The brand also needs to align with the rituals of alcoholic beverage consumption, so it needs to be something people associate with relaxation and socializing. Now, we didn't talk too much about the non-alk beer space, but if that's your category, for on-premise sales, considering having no alk beer on tap. Remember that idea of fitting in? If you're holding a pint, nobody knows if it's alcoholic or non-alcoholic. For cocktails, this idea of plussing up the familiar with interesting taste and ingredient combinations, like our cucumber basil gin ricky, is an avenue to pursue for flavor innovation and to generate that excitement that people are craving, something that they can't get at home or they can't make at home. And finally, functional benefits aren't there yet, but they are on the horizon for the next wave of no alk innovation. This webcast is an example of how Flavorsome helps food and beverage companies achieve their growth plans with a comprehensive solutions model designed to improve your speed to market. Whether you need additional market or consumer insights to view your innovation plan, or need help navigating regulatory complexities, or you want flavor solutions that address formulation challenges, our team is here to support your success. We also have applications experts to validate the performance of your flavor solution at the bench, and we can test production in a pilot setting to reduce scale-up risks. Our sensory and analytical teams can help you confirm that your beverage concept meets expectations too. Thank you for your interest in Flavorsome. We hope you enjoyed this webcast with insights to support innovation in the no-alk space. If you have questions about any of the information presented here today, please contact me. And for additional insights delivered directly to your inbox, please sign up for Flavorsome Discover. Our ebook will be on the way. It examines the no-alk market and formulation opportunities, and it should arrive to your inbox very soon. 